This episode of The Breakdown How To is brought to you by Bluehost. Go ahead and sign up. First link down in the description below for a great web hosting service for just $2.95 a month. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to The Breakdown How To. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how I edit car photos in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now before we jump into this video, I want to say a few things. First of all, I don't consider myself to be a professional car photographer. I take photos for the Breakdown Automotive Instagram, which you can find on Instagram at Breakdown Automotive. But mainly what I'm doing is teaching you how to take an image that's okay and make it look much more stunning. You don't have to be a professional photographer to make your images look stunning. All you have to do is follow some of the steps that I say in this video. Now again, like I said, I'm not a professional photographer, so if you have your own way of doing it, that's great. This is how I do it. Everyone has their own way. This is just something that every single person can come into Lightroom, take a picture of a car, and edit. Now, I also want to say if you're shooting cars, be sure that you're shooting in RAW. RAW makes it so much easier to make adjustments to your images. So go ahead and head over to your camera and make sure you're selecting RAW for your shooting format. Now, one last thing, if you enjoy content like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we're going to be doing many more videos on editing photos, editing videos, and everything around the world of editing. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up, but now let's quit wasting time and jump into the video. So one of the first things that I want to do with this image is crop it a little bit. We also need to straighten it, but we'll get to that in a minute because the auto straightening tool in Lightroom is absolutely fantastic. So typically if I'm posting an Instagram picture, I'll either do 16 by 9 or 4 by 5. For this case, I'm just going to do 16 by 9 because this is a really wide image. And typically what you'll want to do is line it up with the rule of thirds to where the car is taking up one third of the image or two thirds, depending on how big of a shot you had. But what I'm just going to do here is line this up to where it looks like it's taking up about one third of the image. I don't like that too much. I'm going to move it down a little bit more to have a little bit more of the road in it because that's actually going to be a really important part uh, here in a minute. Now some of the background doesn't look the best. This was just a photo that I shot while at a car show. This GT3 was leaving so I went ahead and just grabbed a quick picture of it but that crop will look okay for now and as you can see it made the image just pop a little bit more. It pulled the car in closer to the viewer. Now, what we'll need to do is head on over to the Curves tab. This image is looking pretty good, but I want to add some contrast to it. Now, you can just come up here and increase the contrast here, but I prefer to use the Tone Curve. Like I said, there are a number of ways that you can edit this picture. There are a number of ways that you can edit any picture. This is just how I'm going to do this one. In order to learn the Curves tool, you really need to play around with it a little bit more, but we're just going to do a little bit of a basic S. So we're going to take this one, and add a point at this line right here and drag it down a little bit and as you can see that just made the image a little bit darker. We'll go ahead and pull up the before and after and as you can see it just made that contrast a little bit heavier and then we'll come up to this point up here and drag it up a little bit to where it kind of makes this little S shape. We'll also add a point in the middle. I like to keep it just right in the middle but actually it looks like in this picture that may have added too much so we'll try it right around here that'll work and then something else you can do to increase the contrast a little bit more is take this point that's down here and drag it in just ever so slightly and you can also take the point at the top and drag it over just ever so slightly I'm putting it at 94.5 percent so I'm dragging it in a little bit but not too much to where it's absolutely dramatic and looks like that which is just awful so now what we can do is head back over to the treatment tab and we can go ahead and increase the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to put it at 0.2 Then we can increase the contrast here a little bit more just to get a little bit more contrast. Uh, in fact, that may have been a bit too much. We might try just one on that. Then we can drag the highlights down. This is going to drag the blown out parts of the image down a little bit. We'll also work with the whites to take care of that, but this is going to drag the highlights down and we can pull these shadows up just a little bit just so you can see a little bit of detail of the car. Definitely one of the flaws with editing car pictures is that sometimes these little cracks get a little bit too dark and you're not able to see it when you increase the contrast. But uh, if you increase the shadows a little bit that comes back to life. Now something else we can do is drag the whites down a little bit. As you can see up here on the histogram the whites are blown out just a little bit. They're not too bad. Uh, that would be really bad if uh, 
it looked like that. However, we can drag it down just a little bit to where it was from. And then we can also take the blacks and drag those down quite a little bit as well. Nothing too dramatic, maybe negative six. In fact, we might consider bringing out the blacks a little bit because as you can see up here on the histogram, uh, they were pretty blown out and the detail in the blacks was not able to be seen as much uh, if you drag this all the way down. I'll just see, uh, the more you drag it down, the more detail you lose at a certain point. So we'll just kind of drag it maybe positive two and that gives it a very unique look to the image. Now what I'm gonna do real quick is scroll down here, enable profile corrections and remove monochromatic aberration. So this is going to make sure the image is just a little bit more clear. Uh, obviously this is set for my lens profile which is a Canon uh, EFS 18 to 55 millimeter. And then something else I'm going to do is come down here to transform and go ahead and hit auto. Now most of the time this is going to transform your image just to look a little bit more straight. As you can see it took the front of that sign and made it just look a little more straight on uh, as opposed to being crooked. Now it's not always the best option to use this tool however in this case it worked out pretty well. Now what we can do is come back up to the very top and then we're going to be looking at the clarity. So we can drag the clarity up to about 20, positive 20. And that just makes the image look a little bit more defined. Now, we're going to take care of some of this over defineness uh, here in a minute. And I know that might not make a lot of sense, but we'll take care of it. So dehaze, I typically do anywhere to from 2 to 4. In this case, I'll do 2 because that's going to increase the contrast just a little bit more. And this image has a lot of contrast in it. So then I'm going to take the uh, vibrance up to about positive 19 or 18 and then we'll drag the saturation down to about the same number just negative. This is going to give the image kind of a cool little effect it, it makes it look a little different and then we can come down here to the detail tab take the sharpening all the way up to about 70. Now I do want to say sometimes what I will do is set the amount to about positive 30 and then come in with a brush tool and go ahead and brush around the car to make the car pop out from the rest of the image. Because this is more of a basic tutorial I'll produce that video a little later but once that video is up you can go ahead and click down in the description below to get to a more advanced car photo editing tutorial. But for now, we're just going to stick to this basic one. Then we'll take the luminance tab and drag it up to about positive 40. So as you can see, that's going to smooth the details out a little bit so it doesn't look so abrasive and doesn't look so sharp. Now, as you can see here, we kind of have brought a lot of detail back into the image that you couldn't really see before. In fact, it's much easier to see the tires that this is rocking uh, in the after image than in the before image. But we'll go ahead and zoom back out. And another effect that we can do is called a orange and teal effect. Now this works on some photos, it doesn't work on the others. It really depends on how you shot the photo and the background and everything around it. But to do that, all we need to do is drag the hue of the red primary up a little bit. I'm gonna do it a little more dramatic than I would typically do it just to give you an idea of what orange and teal is. Then we're gonna take the blue primary and drag it down quite a bit as well. Now as you can see, this just ever so slightly added a new effect into the image. It's, it's not very apparent whatsoever, but if we increase the saturation, it will become more apparent over time. What this does is adds red and teal to the shadows and highlights. This is just gonna give the image more of a cinematic effect. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to bump these up quite a lot so you can get more of an idea of what it's doing to our photo. So as you can see, it made the background really red and it made the foreground really blue. Now that's not necessarily how I want the image to look, so I'm gonna drag this up back to about negative 18, and then I'm gonna desaturate it just ever so slightly, possibly negative eight, uh, that may even be too much, we'll do negative seven. Then we'll bring the red primary back down so it's not so over dramatic. And then we'll bring that saturation down just ever so slightly. Negative two will work well for this image. And as you can see, that just gives it a much more different effect than what it had before. Now the last thing I wanna do is add a little bit of a vignette. However, I think before we do that, we need to head up here to the graduated filter. So once we're there, we can just go ahead and drag down from the top. Now I'm just going to decrease the exposure of the top just ever so slightly, just to make it more focused on the car. Something I also like to do is increase the clarity just a little bit more so it increases these areas that may not have been in focus when the photo was taken. We'll just go ahead and uh, 
enter that in and close this dialog box. And something else you can do is either take your brush tool and brush every little bit of the road, or you can take the graduated filter tool again and just drag up a little bit to darken some of this road to make the car increase uh, its pop and wow factor just a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and decrease the road and as you can see it just kind of darkens the road around it and just makes it look a little better now what I would recommend doing is actually coming in here with the brush tool and selecting every little bit that wasn't a car and then decreasing the exposure from there however in this photo there are so many elements and so many lines that we have to watch out for that it's just easier to take the graduated filter and go ahead and decrease the exposure that way Now, anyway guys there's typically one last thing you can do from there this photo is looking pretty good uh, as you can see, if we just pull up the main photo here, the photo is actually looking really good. I am still not too happy with it, though. I think it needs more composition. I, I want something more in it. So something we can do, and this part is completely up to you. You, you can take your radial filter, come over here to a spot, and drag something out that just looks a little bit like this. That might be too big for this picture, but we'll see once we start editing. And then I'm just going to drag this up into these trees over here. Now this image is looking a little too dark for my liking. So what we're going to do is come over here, take the temperature, and increase that. I'll start at 25 so you can kind of see what I'm going for here. Now what this is going to do is just make it look like this image is a little brighter without being too dramatic. What this tends to look like in photos is that the sun is shining down on the area right there. As you can see, sun is peeking through those trees. They're much brighter. Sun is now uh, appearing to shine through this tree, so it's looking a little brighter. We can increase the contrast just a little bit. I'll go ahead and remove those decreased shadows that I had set uh, before. We won't worry about that. But as you can see, it just goes ahead and increases that tree a little bit just so there's more going on in the background and so it doesn't look like the image is so flat. And that's pretty much it. That's how I edit most of my car photos in Adobe Lightroom Classic. That's how I do it when I'm wanting a quick edit for Instagram. However, there is something else that I do sometimes. Sometimes I'll take it over into Photoshop and add a lens flare in it to give it a little bit more of a pop. And I'll go ahead and show you a picture of what that looks like. This is what the image looks like if you want to add a lens flare into it. What I typically do is find a really exposed area uh, such as up here in the sun and drag it out from there in Photoshop. However, that is going to be saved for the next car editing tutorial in Lightroom. We'll also be doing some in Photoshop. So if you guys want, stay tuned for that and subscribe to the channel because you'll want to see when that video comes out. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next one and don't forget to leave a thumbs up. I will see you in the next car editing video. Thanks for watching.